And hello everyone and welcome to this show. I Emil, mean, it's good. All right, welcome to the Make Code for Microbit show. My name is Pelly. I work for Microsoft um, in the Make Code team. I'm Emil. <laughs> I'm Emil. Uh, I'm I'm not Emil. And today we're going to be coding some Microbit uh, action. So we're going to be doing all this code on the MakeCode.microbit.org website. Uh, and we're going to be using the simulator. So even if you don't have the hardware, you can tag along. So Emil, today I thought we would build something called a binary clock. Um, have you heard about binary? Um, kind of. So I'm here on, on Wikipedia. And, uh, you know, we built a stopwatch not so long ago in the microbit, remember? But it was kind of cumbersome to show the scrolling numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're going to do is uh, use... Um, use a binary representation of the numbers to uh, show the clock. So here's here's a hint. Now we can use the rows of LEDs to show the time it is, and instead of showing in uh, you know Arabic numbers, we're going to show that in binary numbers, which means turning on mm -hmm. and off the LEDs. Pretty tough for early morning. All right, well I'll explain all that uh, on paper, and I'll be or clear. All right, so let's go back to the, yeah, geeks. Let's go back to make code and let's uh, let's start a, a new fresh project. All right, so while well, we zoom in a bit, so the first stack is to create a quick uh, quick stopwatch. Yeah. All right, so let's do that. how we did it honestly all right so <laughs> remember your stopwatch oh, yeah, variables. you're gonna need a variable right you're gonna need a variable yep should we name it time i'll call it start and i'll go into three more Remember, we've got our timeline here. That's time. Oh, that didn't. I should. I should look at what I'm writing. So this is time. And mm -hmm. the, the timer starts on the micro bit when it wakes up. Mm -hmm. So we've got this thing called running time. And we're going to store a variable called start. And then that allows us, when time goes on, to do a difference. Yeah. Current time minus start equals, and that's going to be the amount of time. In milliseconds. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to our coding and let's figure that out. So you got a start variable, and I think uh, whenever we press button A, that's where we we're gonna start yeah. counting. go and uh, this is going to be the running time so in, in input advance you're going to find that running time there you go so that's the number of milliseconds uh, that I've been running since the microbit was turned on yeah there's no real-time clock in the microbit so we don't know the wall clock we don't know if it's 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. but we can measure you can you stopwatch yeah we can do a stopwatch all right, uh, and then we're gonna need a for so we're just gonna use that uh, as a, um, as a way we'll figure out the stopping later, and then what we're gonna do is um, is work on the forever, work on the rendering of the time. 
Okay. Uh, All right, so let's move the, the on button press uh, away. And let's zoom in a bit so we can see more. All right, so now we're going to talk about these binary numbers. So if you wanted to build a stopwatch, you would want to do something like some kind of, you know, number, number display, oh. like, you know, zero, zero, and then column, and then um, something like that, right? These are your seconds, and these are your minutes, right? Yeah. So this will go to 0, 0 to 60, mm -hmm. and this will go to 0, 0 to, well, I guess 59, because then it goes to the next one. Okay. Now, we don't have enough space to do that, because in the micro bit, we have one, two, Five, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, actually, we're going to do it here. You get that? We're going to do one, two, three, four, five. Okay? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Not the greatest drawing, and then we have one more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. See that? Yep. Now uh, we're going to use that to represent the numbers. This is going to be, these are going to be the ones. This is going to be value two, four, eight. So this one is equal to one. So this one is going to be a red dot. Mm -hmm. Five is going to be, five is one plus four. So five is going to be this red dot plus this red dot. Does that make sense? No? no. <laughs> if you think about what five is, five equals. Oh, wait, yeah, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Five equals four plus one. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's a binary representation of the same number because instead of these values, we use dots that are turned on and off. And the same would happen here. Let's say I have, let's say I have like three here and six. Mm -hmm. Then three is going to be what? In the middle. I three is equal to one plus two. One plus two. So one plus two. How about six? Four plus two. Four plus two. And that's how we build our binary clock. Mm -hmm. Let's try one more exercise. So I'm gonna try five nine and four seven. Sixty nine minutes forty seven seconds. Okay. Okay, give me the dots. Cotton blurred okay no I'm not fifteen Okay, so you five plus um yeah, the dots. So five is gonna be now remember we've got one. Five is? Five is one plus four. One plus four. All right. So I get red dot, red dot. How about nine? Nine is eight plus one. Eight plus one. Oh, so we start to see the pattern here. When we think about it, it's not that hard. It's about four. Two, three, four. Just four. Just what? Just four. Just four. How about seven? Um, seven is 
four plus two plus one? Yes. Three of them. Yeah. So that's how we're going to be doing our clock. Mm. And we're going to be using, you know, we'll leave these LEDs alone. That make sense? Yeah. Okay. Back to the coding. I'm going to keep that around. I'm going to keep that around in case we need a reference. All right. So, Emil, um, just for testing, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to create a variable. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call that variable test. And I'm going to use that to kind of test my the program that draws the, the numbers. So for example, let's test seven. And now we're gonna start to draw on the first row that seven. So what we can do is uh, just a bunch of if statements. Mm -hmm. And so what we could do is go over all the cases mm -hmm. and draw them, or we could do something a bit smarter. And for that, we're going to need, but I'm not sure we have it in. What are you looking for? I'm looking for an operator that's called bitwise and, but I'm not sure we have it in box. So we're just going to have to hard code block. it. All right, let's go. Can let's make go. a gray block. We could make a gray block. Um, we don't need to. We, can we don't need to. Let's do it in box. Yeah. We'll, we'll improve it later. All right, so let's go through all the cases. So if uh, test is equal to 7, then um, So we're using test? Yeah. Well, actually, you know what? Let's do a function. I'm going to create a function, and it's going to do draw binary. And it's going to have two inputs. So, no. done? No. It's going to have uh, two number inputs. One is going to be the column we want to draw it to. <coughs> and the other one is going to be the number. Yeah. And I'm going to call that the value. All right, and Ooh. it's going to call decimal. So we know that we have a decimal value and want to draw it in binary. All right, so let's call that function uh, in forever. Where is my forever? I lost it. Why is that so zoomed out? Oh, is it always like that? Uh, we're going to call it in forever with some dummy values just for testing. So okay. let's get rid of all that. And now just call it bits and functions. New call. Hey, okay, so it's going to draw to the first row, its first column with number one. Okay, that's great. That's our test value. Um, and that's going to be a great start. So let's go in that function and try to write the case where mm -hmm. we handle one. So where's the function? <coughs> no, oh, no, the one yeah, we just created. Nice. All right, so um, so what we're gonna do is an if, and I'm gonna say that if. So we're gonna do if if the decimal is equals to one, mm -hmm. then we need to draw. Then we need to turn on an LED at the right spot. So we need to. Uh, we can use go into LED and then you can use the plot function. All right, so put that down in the mouth. Um, so the column is our X. So What's that's. There? Should we change oh, that? Sh yeah, it should be one. The column is our X. So we're going to use that. And now we need to figure out which one we want to turn on. And we said one should be at the bottom. 
so we want coordinate four. Yeah, if you hover in the simulator, it'll show you the coordinate. Yeah, like. All right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, it works. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna add a new test case. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring the forever here. And I'm gonna say, and be, by the way, we were in the right column, which is great. So we're gonna handle which number? Uh, one and uh, two. Two. All right. So we add two, and I'm gonna make uh, one in the column zero. Okay, one still works, but two doesn't work. Well, obviously because we haven't implemented it. Yeah. So we're gonna do that. And now we need to uh, turn on the LEDs, the correct LEDs. So two would be Chi Chi here. Two yeah. would be yeah, isn't it right? Oh no. Yeah. Now we're counting, it should be uh, go back. Um, three. Row three, yes. And we test that. Yeah, two. Perfect. Yep. So. And we can keep testing like that. This is a great methodology. Keep, add a little test case. Make sure your program, it's called test-driven development. You, you create a test case. You make sure your test what? case doesn't work. So and then you zero, fix it. So this would be two. And this would be three. This would be two. That? This? No, that one. Two. And now we should expect to see number three in binary, which three in binary, Emil's going to tell me what it is. It is one and two. One and two. So in our screen, that should be This is going to be a really big <laughs> function when we're done. Yeah, we'll, we'll learn how to make it super short, but it's a great way to start. All right, so three, we get one and two. You know what? This is silly. We should do it inverse. It would be so much easier. We're just going to use the binary values. We're going to plot. If it's 1, we're going to plot 1. If it's 2, we're going to plot 2. And if it's 3, we're going to plot 1 and 2. It makes more sense. We can just sum those. Right? Okay. Does it make sense to you? Then we don't even have to remap them. We can oh, just okay. use the values. So we just keep on. Yeah, we keep on going. Let's add. Uh, let's do number four. Wait, I'm gonna zoom out so I can see more. So do we keep on calling the? Yeah, we need to. This is our test case. So we want to try. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> let's do four and five. Not three and four. No, no, we can we can do. We have five five columns, so we're gonna get four mm -hmm. and five. All right. Now, if we look at the simulator, four and five don't work, so we need to fix them. And the uh, three and four. And because we call all these, so we have to call these too. Yeah, we need to handle when decimal is equals to four and when it is equals to five. So when it's equals to four, in our binary, I'm gonna redraw my binary. I'm gonna redraw my cheat sheet here. Look, if you put your note under the overlap button, oh, okay. Is that it? Yeah. Let's do five. I've updated the cheat sheet. We're using now the screen coordinates. 
Okay, else. I'm doing some examples here. Five. And I'll go through our. You can't see, but I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing on paper. And then, since there's two, we do four and one. We did it. <laughs> do we have to add more? Wait, I made a mistake. <laughs> um, do we have to add more? Yeah. Yeah. So, but for which numbers? We have to go all the way to... Eight? Uh, no, we're showing time, so it, it stops at... Well, for seconds, it may go to nine. Okay. So we have to go all the way to nine. Okay. I've got the cheat sheet here. We cheat went through sheet. that. All right, so let's, uh, let's update our test here. And instead of one, two, three, four, five, we're going to do uh, six, seven, eight, nine. So Let's change this. Six. Seven, what about the one, two, three, four, five? Eight. Well, we know they work. So it's just testing ground. All right. Nothing shows up. Great. Now let's add the case for six. Undo. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. Case for six. And make sure you update the, the number five there. Alright, so six is going to be. Four and two. Four and two. They have to sum up to be the number, and you can only use multiple of twos. Yeah. Let's keep going. Seven. It kind of becomes mechanical. You're gonna see a pattern. So it's gonna be a big if. Seven, right? Seven. Yeah. Two and one. Yeah. And make sure you change the equality there. Seven, and we keep going. There's only so many numbers we have to do. I just wanna, oh uh, no, we're gonna do the big reveal of how big <laughs> this is. Okay, so duplicate. And we've got number eight. And number eight is gonna be? Just eight. Oh, no, because we don't have eight. We don't? No. I thought we had eight. Oh, we had it on a different chart. We only have one, two, three. We, wait, no, my, my cheat sheet is <laughs> broken. <laughs> we do have eight. Yeah. I need the, some of that fake coffee. <laughs> I'm going to throw that, that cheat sheet away. I got really confused by the coordinates. <laughs> okay. More. Oh, then we're doomed. What? Uh, then, then my approach on using... Uh, okay, let's, let's do that. This there's is not no, going to work. There's no Y column 8. Yeah, there's no Y column 8, so we have to remap them. Oh, so my God. So could we just do 4 and 2 and 1? No, that's 7. Yeah. 4, 2, 2. <laughs> No, we have to map. Zero. So one can stay at one, two can stay at two. Four needs to be three. Mm. Oh, the mapping was so nice. <gasps> <laughs> that becomes three, that becomes three. And that's four. Yeah. 
don't want to understand that. What? I don't understand that. Oh, okay, let's undo it. What? Who? What? 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 Okay, so these are the numbers we want to sum. One, two, one, two, four. And we can't really use four here. Oh, wait. No, we have five LEDs. We can totally do it. Well, it can be four. It has to be the third bit. So this is really counting the bits. We turn on the third bit. And here we turn on. Of course, this is a bit counterintuitive. I will give you that. And this is going to be four. Mm -hmm. All right. Do nine. And we're good to go. Elf? Yeah. We could do a functions to explain that. And then that would make sense. Oh, uh, nine. So nine is going to be. Four, three, and two? Eight and one. Oh, uh, yeah. Eight is three. Is the third bit? A three. Is the fourth bit? And then. And. One. One is. All right, so now I'm really going to do my cheat sheet to explain what's going on here. Otherwise, we're all going to stay confused forever. So these are the y coordinates. Zero, one, two, three, four. And these are the values, binary. Mm -hmm. You got zero, one, two, four, eight. All right. Let's switch the camera. Okay. So on this side we have the y's, and that's what we send in plot. Yep. Those are plots. And this is how we use to create our numbers. So if we want to do, I'm going to do an exercise. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine. All right. Mm -hmm. So five is going to be four plus one. Mm -hmm. So four. No, four. The other four plus one. <laughs> uh, can you show the code where we do five? I'm going to double check. Yep. Mm. Uh, you want to go into the. All right, and we did a three and one. Yeah, because we've got three and one here. How about six? <laughs> How about six? Um, six, we did three and two. So I'm counting four here, two here, and then this becomes three and two. All right, that's right. How about seven? Three, two, and one. So seven is four plus two plus one, which becomes one, two, three. Three, two, one. Yes. How about eight? Eight is four. Eight is four. So eight is here in binary, which means it's this LED turned on, which means it's LED four. Yeah. And number nine? Four and one. Eight plus one, which means four and one. So this makes all sense now. Yep. Perfect sense. Let's see how big this if sample is. <laughs> and we've got this huge perf. Uh, and I think there's one more oh. thing we need to do. We need to clear the screen at the start. So at the very top. Actually, no. We'll do that in forever. Okay. So. We're kind of halfway through now. We were able to show a number. Halfway through? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so well, we still don't have, so we, what we have here, okay, mm -hmm. so we've got a thing to show a number. You know, and this is actually cool if you, if you do something like this, if you do a loop, zero to nine. You didn't call out all the binaries. I'm gonna I'm gonna clear the screen. 
Let me try please extra saving every time I draw. Oh, Wait. that's way too fast. When we did compass, didn't can we just do show arrow north? For what? For compass, when we did a compass. Oh yeah. <laughs> we could have. <laughs> um We need to pause here. Because we can't see anything. So now to pause. You're gonna see it counting. How is that supposed to make sense? You should see first the dot. It doesn't clear the screen for some reason. Hmm. Maybe we should what, press A? Oh. Well, that's interesting. Make a bug in our code. I so. want to go through the puzzle. Look. <laughs> but if. Must be a rendering gimmick. And there's You should first see. I don't know why this dot stays alive there. That's highly suspicious. I'm gonna add one more case here, which is decimal equals nine, just to make it clear. Nine. All right, did we get all the numbers right? Decimal equals one, two, go. three, four, Almost like four. Five hundred. Oh, we were missing zero. That was a problem. There he goes. Oh, it does. Oh, clear screen. I need to move the clear screen inside of my loop. And then it's going to make sense. All right, let's go. One, two, three, four. Ooh, that's too fast. Five hundred. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Okay. <laughs> Maybe pause it a bit more. All right, let's pause it a bit more. So four, one, two, two three, three, four, four five, six, six, seven, eight, eight nine. nine. Yes. <laughs> All right, it's counting. We've got we've got our. We can show a decimal uh, binary number and yeah, kind of get used to it reading it. It's not too bad. All right, and we're in for, um, well, this is actually already a pretty good, pretty good stream. Quality, uh, Quality stream right there. Um, we're just going to show the number of seconds. We're not going to uh, split it into minutes. Oh, okay. All right, so to do that, um, in the forever, we're going to uh, compute the elapsed time. So, show... So I'll zoom in a bit. Just show start. Uh, we're going to create a variable and then compute the elapsed time. Okay. Let's do that. How do we call the variable? Elapsed. Remember, super good timeline here. We're, we have a start variable and then we're going to do a difference to get how many milliseconds. Okay, our green scene was getting kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do that. And we're going to do the difference between the current running time and the start time. Okay. Uh, so, we need like. so that's math. That's a subtraction. So it's going to be a subtraction there. between uh, the current running time and the value in start, which is not available. All right. And that gives us milliseconds. So how about we divide that by a thousand? So we get seconds. Wait, what happens with six six eight? Nothing. Because we're not using elapsed. Oh, okay, yeah. Alright, so we're gonna we're gonna actually divide this by a thousand. So we're moving from So we went from milliseconds divided by a thousand to seconds. Yeah. All right. Now this is uh, where the interesting math goes on. We need to turn these things into digits. 
Um, and what we can do is we can look at, so we have four, we have five digits. Mm -hmm. So we can say, so five would be, these are the tens. These are the hundreds. Mm -hmm. These are the thousands. These are the hundred thousands. Hundred thousands. Uh, the millions. Oh, there. it could also be ten thousand. Ten thousand. And then one hundred thousand. Yeah. All right. So what what we can use is uh, is do a division. Yeah. So we can say let's create a, a variable. Let's say hundred thousands. <laughs> hundred thousands. <laughs> And I'm going to clear the screen here. What? Get rid of this. The 100,000 is going to be the elapsed time divided by 100,000. Yeah. But we're going to do one more thing. We're going to round it. So I'm going to round, and I'm going to explain why I'm doing that. So I'm going to take my, my elapsed time. And I'm going to actually I'm going to re, I'm going to round this one, so we're good. Oops. So the problem is the elapsed time because I divide by a thousand is now a float. Uh, it has a dot in the end too. It has a. It's not like an integer number. Mm -hmm. So I'm rounding it up so that's it's a number. And then here I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do an integer division uh, by a hundred thousand. And that one is in, I think it's in here. Integer division, that's the one you want to use. So we're going to do an integer division of the elapsed time by 100,000. Uh, how many zeros? Yep, that's good. <sighs> and then we can just show it on the first row. And yeah, it should be zero <laughs> for a long time. Now it gets, um, now what we can do, this is pretty much what you do when you're doing your math. Let's say I have, my number is 100,000, wait, I'm gonna do a number easy. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, this should have been the tens of thousands. So I, I want to show number one. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to divide this by 10,000. Go. Yeah. So what do I divide that? Uh, yeah, the 100,000 should be 10,000. 10. And if I do the integer division, mm -hmm. the I the integer division is ten thousand now, right? Uh, where is my view here? All right. <coughs> if I divide this by ten thousand, I'm gonna get uh, one. One. <laughs> right. Now, how do I get number two? I don't know. Well. What we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to subtract, we're going to, we're going to take the reminder. Mm -hmm. We're going to, we're going to keep the reminder. I'm going to work on the reminder. So what we're going to do yeah. is we're going to say, oh, 100,000 is divided by 10,000, but we're going to say now elapsed is now equal to, hold on, let me move this up. We're going to do <coughs> elapsed is equal to. <coughs> The remainder of elapsed divided by 10,000. Again, if you look at my, my drawing here, mm -hmm. first I divide and I get the 1. And now I'm keeping the second part that was the remainder. All right? And now I'm going to do the remainder divided by. Uh, 10,000, 1,000? 1,000. 
That should be equal to? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I don't know. Two, 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 two. Yeah. Cool. So let's do that. And you know what? We're going to rename this thing. The digit. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. So we're going to keep doing our math here. I'm going to say, oh, this is going to be elapsed divided by a thousand. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to show that on the next column. Start seeing the pattern? Yeah, kind of. Now let's keep going. I'm going to do it on paper. So now I'm going to take the reminder. So I'm going to be left with three, four, five. Can you do that in code? Yeah. So remainder. You want to maybe copy all these these three lines. No. Let's do it one by one. All right. One. Which, that one, this one? Yeah. All right, so we did the remainder of 1,000. Then we do an integer division by 100. Then we show that. To, and we do that all the way to 3, 4, 5? All the way to 5. Okay, so we keep See on that. just copying? Yes. And obviously we could do a loop, but we're gonna do it like this for now. Forgot how to do a loop. All right, so you need to update the values. So I've done divided by 100, equal to three. So divided by 10? Yeah, divided by 10 equals four. And then divided by one equals five. No, it's gonna duplicate. This is a big event day because all the what? Oh yeah, a lot of code. Uh, so that's number four. And here you should have, wait, wait a minute. Hey, you didn't update the values. No, oh, yeah. So. Thousand. Ten thousand. Then, then should be now hundred. So, oh, okay, no, because, oh yeah, a hundred. And then we go 10. 10. And then we go 1. 1. Which really does nothing. Yeah. Ha! You see how it's. Yeah. Hey! It's working! We've got a clock! All right, let's try it on the hardware. See how it looks. <laughs> Blinking, so it's downloading. And now we've got a super cool clock that not only teaches you how to count in binary, Daddy? but you can also have um, everything going on here. And you can see that we uh, we so we can read that this is. 2, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, so we've got a perfect clock watch. We, we're not limited to the scrolling on the screen and we're learning these binary numbers. Now this was a lot of code. Let's take a look at... Uh, I think it's the longest stream on Mark of it. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of code. Uh, but actually, there's clever ways to use loops to fix that, which you know, we'll cover maybe in the next video. Then there's just a puny little button. Yeah, there's a puny little <laughs> button. For example, this one, you know, there's a pattern each time. See how it kind of divides each time? Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you can use that to create a pattern. Now we're going to repeat that five times. And... 
here, this value here, can make it a variable. Well, but maybe that's for another episode because I think we're running out of time. Yeah. So we built, kind of hand rolled our own binary counter and mm -hmm. renderer, and we built a clock latch. You can see it, it's actually measuring time right now. And we can use that actually to measure our show time. Yeah. Make sure we don't overlap. And that's all our show for today. Um, thank you for watching the marvelous binary stopwatch in Microbit. Microbit. <laughs>